I've just realised next door's drilling. I'm hoping this is one of those YouTube moments where the, the host says, I hope you can't hear that, and you never can. Hello there, I'm Greg, and I'm making a Ghostbusters belt gizmo. Fans of screen accuracy, look away now. This belt gizmo is part of the Ghostbusters outfit. I don't know what it does. The simplest way of making one is to buy a vintage Sanyo calculator, take the outside off, put it in a tape measure holster, and that's it. But those calculators now cost about 800 quid. So I found these printouts by Gyrus Whitley on the Replica Prop Forum and thought, well, all you've got to do is print that on some colour paper and stick some bits to it and you'll have a belt gizmo. So this is one of my little one-day projects. I don't know how long I think a day is, or indeed how quickly I think I work, but um, it wasn't a one-day project. So there's going to be some black and white bits because there were a few dead ends where I made something and then had to remake it in a way that was better. But I'm leaving them in because there's things to learn. And we're all here to learn. This is edutainment. So yeah, I say it's not screen accurate, but there are many versions of this. There are brown ones and green ones. The ones from Ghostbusters 2 were pieces of rubber with silver lines drawn on with a pen. So there's no shame in making a shoddy one of these. I haven't made a holster for it yet. I'm going to, but I'm also going to make a sort of stunt copy walkie-talkie. And that better be a one-day build, because that's a black brick with a sticker on it. So I'm going to make leather holsters for those two things in the third and final part where I finish my outfit. Let's watch the thing now. Oh, it's there. <gasps> so these are the printouts I found from Gyrus Whitley on the RPF. Those are also the templates for the holsters. Very useful. And once I found these, I couldn't really not make them. The only bit I don't use is that orange rectangle, which is from the daughter board, which is the secondary bit to the motherboard. So here I'm mounting the motherboard on the High School Musical board game. I don't know how that's in my life. I don't know why I've got the High School Musical board game board, but Board Game Board is a really good source of sort of book leather backed cardboard. So I'm using that as my backing. So black and white means first attempt. These were the, I should have learnt the parts of a circuit board, but the transistors, the cyclotrons, I don't know, the thin white bits and the slightly thicker black bits, which I originally was just laminating onto white thin EVA foam and black thick EVA, fo EVA foam using sellotape, colouring in the sides black, and they were going to be fine, but sticking them on proved a challenge. So here I'm just using Sharpies to colour in the edge. And quite clever, proud of this. Those um, white squares have gold, lots of little gold details down the sides. And I thought, I wonder if I've got a plastic comb that I never use. If I own a comb, it's definitely a comb I never use. So I've just trimmed these down, then cut them into eight pieces, taped them back to back, and I'm making them gold with a metallic pen. Little filaments, frondulent details. Also, I was proud of this, but it proved difficult to stick things to. I saw online someone saying, are these circuits brown or are they green? And someone said, well, actually, like a real circuit board, they're brown, but coated with green stuff. And I'd recently bought some very cheap, very not effective for what I bought it for, lighting gels. You've got to buy the cheapest one and see if it's good. And it often isn't. But I thought, oh, well, I'll be very legit. And I'll laminate this brown circuit board with some thin green stuff. And it looks good. It looks reasonably authentic for what was meant to be a one day build. So now I'm just going onto the back, cutting it into tabs and wrapping it like a present. The back's going to be very messy, so I'm just holding it on on the back with clear parcel tape. Then going over with a silver pen and hitting all the little dots of solder. And then again, a gold pen on the bottom to hit these connector parts. Then this button that goes on the end, just made this in Photoshop because I couldn't find a high res version. So it's an E, a capsule shape and an arrow just on white printer paper. And I'm sticking over a rectangle of red lighting gel with helicopter tape, the thick clear tape that apparently they cover helicopter rotary blades, rotor blades with. Let's get some tubes. So these are very fine drinking straws or art straws. I don't think you can get these anymore because they're plastic. Um, filled with bamboo skewers, like barbecue skewers. I did manage to find a yellow one and colour it in orange with a sharpie. And I'm drawing all the lines round for... Are these resistors? Anyway, to make very rough versions, sort of stunt versions of resistors. Then I'm folding out paper clips into an L shape, thickening up the paper clip with some thin masking tape, and sliding my handmade, hand-drawn, don't look at it too closely, resistor onto what I then fold into basically a staple and use my gomji bar to put two holding holes. 
black and white again. So for a circuit board you need some cylinders that stick up off it. So these were little white plastic tubes that I both capped off and held on with paper fasteners, split pins, and coloured in white. I'm going to change them. And then those were some little grey and beige, tiny little split pins I had that also looked a bit circuit boardy. And I'm going to replace them too. So, a cassette tape. Nice to use a cassette tape. I had to figure out how many of these test tubes I already own fit into a cassette tape box. Turns out it's six. That's the least screen accurate thing, is that there aren't eight of these tubes, which on the original calculator have a number on them. It's a very, very old calculator. So they're like groovy old light tube, valve tube things with stuff inside them. So for my stuff here, I'm using disposable razor covers, which just have a bit of techy shape to them. Never thought I'd use those and they just fit in there perfectly and it was lovely. Then I just capped around the top edges of those with some thin bits of black electrical tape. Okay, LED strip. These lights are gonna break. The lights are gonna break! What's that from? Nearly. I changed one of the words. So, oh, so pleased with myself here. This is some LED strip. And I think I folded it too tightly. Two right angle folds that I'm taping down and I think I just, I think I just asked too much of it. Um, but I had, you know, a USB battery packet plugged into. It was lovely and flat. Just lots of tape to hold it all. Crossed fingers. He's full of hope. Thumbs up. Thumbs up, this works. He doesn't know he's in black and white. It's a failure film, it's a film of failure. Monochrome equals disaster. So here, just to warm them up, I'm covering them in a bit of orange lighting gel. It's all sellotape and parcel tape, because it's clear, and this is going to be covered with a bit of diffusion plastic. It's a nice, flexible, self-adhesive on the back, sticky light box, but it's gonna break. So the button on the end that has an E on it, I got this plastic building block, decided to cut it through the middle because I know I'm going to cover the outside in, in quite stippled texture, maybe some super glue. So I think that that join will be fairly invisible once I'm done. And it's invisible enough. Here I'm just cutting out a little window by using my smallest drill bit to do four holes and then cutting between them with a craft knife. And here, as I said before, a bit of plastic just to diffuse the details of that LED strip. This is some acrylic from a cheap photo frame. It's cut into a strip and sanded with wire wool. There. There's the first point of ah. Ah. Oh, I've shoved it down. It works now. That's fine. That won't be a recurring problem. Nice to use a cassette tape box and the flap from a VHS tape. Particularly as I'm making a prop from a film from 1984. I don't know, there's some resonance there. There's some 80s tech it's made out of cassette tapes and VHS tapes, and I just needed to widen the cassette tape box to make a, something on the end to hold the, the E button, the E box. So I used um, a VHS strip that I had in my Greebly box. Just a bead of hot glue along the angle, and then I'm pressing it in place. And there, nicely diffused, a light box, it all fits. Perfect. So just painting the e-box, I wrapped the outside of it in brown paper tape in the end and then sort of varnished it just with super glue to give it a nice crispy skin. So I'm just stippling on some gloss black to give it a plasticky look. Again, another thing I did and then redid. These are, once again, I don't know the parts of a circuit board, but there are some little circles that stand up. Little stand up circles. So these, I don't know what these plastic circles are, but they're in my circular bits box. And I'm using double-sided tape to stick them to some scrap paper and colouring them in gold. Then, so that I can make them all just stand up on their own, I'm hot gluing them across the bottom to a, you wouldn't know it, but green lolly stick. But they turn out to be too big, so I replace them with something smaller. Now these, in terms of screen inaccuracy bothering me, which it hardly does at all, these are pretty bad. <laughs> because these rubber furniture feet are the sort of perfect shape for the little caps that go along the top of where each tube is, but they don't line up with the tubes. They're too wide. And if I was in a buggy mood, that would bug me, but I'm not in a buggy mood, so it's fine. It's fine. At this stage, it was at this stage that I decided, actually, if I had some actual circuit board, that might help. So I went through my old electronics box. This is our old router, I think. And gutting a thing is, is fun. I might do some gutting electronics as just bonus videos from my Patreon, just finding out what's, I've got a toaster and I wanna find out what's in that sucker. So I'm just pulling out wires and little transistors and transformers and little 
actual circuit board parts to add a bit of realism, which is why I replaced them some stuff from earlier, because these bits just look better. Here I'm harvesting wire. That's a lovely old bit of vintage wire I've had for a while with brown cloth tape on the outside. But I needed thin red wire. Needs must. That's fun. Couldn't quite get a good enough grip, so I grabbed both sides, the red and the black, with two pairs of pliers and just sort of... <sighs> and my shirt burst open and it was very manly and strong. So... <laughs> Snip. So now I've got some red and white wire. I just figured out exactly how many bits I needed, divided it into all those thirds, and then I'm using little red cable ties to bundle them together in threes. Now that my E-button box is dry, just using a screwdriver to push the paper cap down into all the corners and edges. And that looks quite nice. I think it's currently matte black, but I do coat it in, in gloss black later, so it looks more plasticky. Then further diffusion. I thought these number tubes still need a bit more detail going on in there. Screen in accurate detail, but detail nonetheless. So I just cut out some little rectangles of, again, sanded plastic just to diffuse and confuse the eye. Yes, these furniture buttons, I'm just drilling holes to hold them on the top there, which is fine, and they're fine. This is the original daughter board. I was going to, I thought it was so clever. The plan was going to be that the daughter board, which is a whole separate piece, was the battery pack. And I was going to wind the wire with the coil flex and then decorate that battery pack to look like the daughter board. So here I've just covered the lid, the cover of the battery pack, with some brown paper tape, and I'm just sticking on an actual bit of old brown circuit board, to which I've added a couple of loops of white paper clip, and some wire, and a red pen lid. And I'm just holding it on with both hot glue and a couple of split pins, paper fasteners, which were exactly the right connectors for this project, because they're flat on the back. To make these bundles of wire look a bit more techy, I just use my liquid chrome pen to colour in the end of the wire and the cable tie, and then my pyrography tool to melt a slot in the sort of underside of the bottoms of each test tube, because they're going to be stuck down, so it can be fairly messy on the back there. And then here I'm just using the pyrography tool again to sort of fold the melted plastic over it and hold it in place. That melted plastic is a bit brittle still, so I'm also putting on a blob of five minute epoxy. So these are thoroughly in there. The wires are thoroughly tubed. Right. So these little white things with gold bits, they were stuck on with super glue and five minute epoxy, but it was sellotape sticking to lighting gel. And there's very little grab there. So I thought I'll just test that these are well stuck on. And they just, they came off like nout. So, I'm remaking them in wood. Completely new plan, I'm making them out of these wooden domino pieces. I'm going to countersink a hole so it's flush, flat with the top of the wooden piece, put a paper fastener through, and then hide that paper fastener underneath these cut-out paper designs, which again I'm going to laminate on just with sellotape. The paper fasteners were the perfect thing for this. They're primitive and simple, and I kind of love them. This new part I'm making gets you four points. That's pretty good. So again, the white tubes held on with paper fasteners. Once I had all these little transistors, resistors, you tell me. I don't mind being told things I don't know. Um, I thought they're better. So I'm mounting them onto a plate and then just sticking them all onto the motherboard. And I thought I'd use one of these round cornered wooden fake Scrabble pieces and then sticking that on. So now, all these parts are held on with paper fasteners or wire. They're physically held on through onto the back. They're not just glued on. Because gluing things onto lighting gel... Ooh, that way madness lies. Let's put more detail in these tubes. Wire mesh. You know I love a mesh under a glass. You might not know that. This might be the first time you ever watch me. I love mesh under glass. So I'm finally, just to finish them off, putting in a little rectangle of wire mesh stuff that you put in a, in a grate. And then I'm sticking these all in place with nice clear hot glue. It's going very well. The little domes on top don't line up, but we, that doesn't bother me. Why do you keep talking about it? It doesn't bother me. Stop mentioning it. All right, then. Here we go. Well, just about to assemble it. Pretty much nearly done. Just check the lights again. And it's sort of washing over me in a wave of abject horror uh, that I've broken the lights. I guess it's the hot glue. Maybe I've bent this connector or 
the bends, the curves I've put in it are too tightly folded. It doesn't work anymore. Um, you know, I'm going to be happy with it when it's done. So this is a vlog of discovery where things have gone wrong. And it's worth mentioning because it's a it's a warning to you. If you're going to do LED strips, don't fold them too tightly. Maybe don't put pressure on them from above. Maybe don't stick them on with hot glue. There could be any number of reasons that I have just broken this thing that I was about to assemble and it was going to be finished. Let's buy some other fairy lights. He wasn't happy, but he was dignified and I'm very proud of him. So these are dirt cheap. I think they're called rice LEDs because they're not even a bulb. You know, they're just a little one mounted on a wire which I have very carefully folded back and forth and just held down with lots of little tabs of sellotape. And it's quite therapeutic and nice. So it's, it's a strip of 20 of those and I've put them in in threes uh, in a row of six to go behind each tube and there are two spare ones on the end. But I'm just using lots of sellotape and parcel tape to tape them down to a piece of plastic. Then I've put over a skin of, again, helicopter tape, peeled off the strip of orange lighting gel from the other one, put it back onto these and yeah. It's fine. I wanted to use the LED strip because I've never used it before and it was a gift from my wife. And I bought the USB battery pack especially. So you learn, you learn, don't you? The new daughter board doesn't need to be a battery pack anymore. So I've just cut out a piece of wood, rounded the corners and I'm making some circuitry caramel. Burnt umber, yellow ochre and cadmium orange. So now using my gomji bar, I've put a triangle of holes for each wire. I mean, it's fiddly. No wonder this took four or five days. And I'm putting through just enough, you know, just enough slack that there's a nice curve to the wires. Then on the back, I stuck it all with hot glue. And again, I think super glue and baking soda as well. And then just use my flush snips to, once the glue was set, cut off all the bits of wires that were sticking out. And here I'm holding it all in place with hot glue. Yay! I think it's a fun thing. I, I really do, and I'm glad I made it. So, the only thing the coiled flex wire that goes between the motherboard and the daughterboard doesn't have is any sort of plug on the end. So this is an old USB charger or, or computer cable, computer cable, that I pulled the metal bit out of, and then I just, I couldn't get the wire out of it. So I slit the back open, like sort of, like a predator ripping out a spine and um, pulled out the, the green wire and now I'm just putting the black wire into that split and covering it with super glue and baking soda and from the front it looks very really, very really neat. Then this little piece of wood that looks like one of those French coffee flavoured biscuits. Do you know those? A like grey sugary coffee biscuit. Uh, I've covered in a layer of UV resin. This is another bit of blue domino that I've drilled three little tiny holes in. In fact I think I just used my gomja bar. Put three little bits of wire in and I am, fingers crossed, sticking it onto the thinner white bits underneath with five minute epoxy and some dots of super glue as well. Then, thanks to Laura Kampf's video about making a tape measure holster, uh, love her videos, they're always great, whatever they're about, I thought, oh, I never use those, so I can nick a belt clip off the back of one of my tape measures. So I did. And then this other end of the flex wire, I'm just attaching it to the, the daughter board, this time using a, a nut and bolt. I found these uh, crocodile clips. I think they were part of, a, of a, just a, a picture hanging kit. And notice the ones on the original prop are sort of covered in black. And I had recently bought some heat shrink, which is what you insulate wires with. So I put a bit of black on, heated it with a heat gun, and it shrank down, which looks roughly prop accurate. The back of this thing is a disgrace. The back of this thing is a disgrace. But, you know, hide your crimes. Hide your crimes, mate. We don't need to see the paper fasteners, parcel tape, sellotape, baking soda, super glue, and hot glue, because we're going to stick on another piece of high school musical board game. And that's how the pros do it. Yeah, so very happy with this. I think it's cool, it's techy, and it will be on a correctly coloured belt once I've stained the belt. That's in part three. I'm hoping it's a good part three. You know, most trilogies, the third one, but it'll be fine. I never showed you that the battery pack for the lights is now just on the back there. So the switch is, it's a self-contained unit. But aren't we all? Let's take a look at the final belt gizmo.
today's YouTube channel recommendation is Azariel Atelier. Hazariel Atelier. She's a lovely French seamstress. She does amazing corsetry and handbags and interior design and she's just a really inspiring crafter who is currently looking for global collaborators to make her scales that are going to go onto this amazing dress. Get out of here you! Uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you with part three very soon and here are some very heartfelt thanks to my lovely lovely patrons. Goodbye.